My favorite line of the book was, I can't wait to show you my banana, which was actually written on a banana that he gave to her. Katie girl. Girl, I've got a new story for you and you are going to love it. Stella and Hudson are soulmates. They can read each other's minds, each other's moods, and the food slash beverage of this book is wine. And her name sounds like a fancy wine. Stella Rose Bardot. Stella and Hudson meet at a wedding. It's actually Hudson's sister's wedding and Stella wasn't invited. She didn't know anybody at the wedding, the wedding party, nobody. She crashed the wedding with her gay friend, Fisher. The wedding invitation came to her house that was actually addressed to an ex-roommate who had left her high and dry with a bounced check for like two months rent. The girl's name was Evelyn. This girl owes me like a night of luxury because she totally gypped her. The wedding was at the New York City Public Library. Stella loved that library and she had always wanted to go to a wedding that was held in the library. Fisher was actually the one encouraging her to go and she felt nervous the entire time. And that's where she met Hudson and it was like an instant connection. He's like, oh, you smell good. And she's like, yeah, I know, I'm a perfume chemist. She used to work for Estee Lauder as one of the perfume chemist. She had recently quit her job to start her own perfume company called Signature Scents. Is that the right? Signature Scent. She developed this algorithm where you pick out the smells that you like out of the samples and it will create a personalized perfume for you that you will just love. So when she was at the bar, she ordered this martini, I think, and she smelled it first because She's a perfume chemist and she has this, what's it called? Hyper, hyperosmia, supersonic smell. And she could tell that they weren't using the correct gin that she requested. Stella and Hudson are completely enamored with each other. Hudson asks her to dance. She's like, well, you're a really good dancer. And he's like, yeah, I know. My mom was a professional ballroom dancer. Halfway through the wedding, he's like, what's your name? And she, lied and had to say Evelyn Whitley. And of course he knew that name because Evelyn worked for him at their company as the receptionist. And so he knew that she was lying. She realized that he knew that she was lying. And so they kind of left prematurely and she left her phone at the wedding. So a couple days later, she went to his office to get her phone back. Again, he was so enamored with her smelling so good because she's a perfume chemist. He didn't like realize what he was doing until after he already did it. He asked her out on a date and she said yes. But because she was a little flustered after as she was typing her phone number into his phone, she accidentally typed the wrong phone number. Like it was just one number off. Weeks go by and he doesn't call, but he did try to call. It ended up ringing to a pizza place. He thought that she was just blowing him off and being rude to him. She thought that he was blowing her off. She ends up befriending his sister, Olivia, the bride. It ends up finding out that she has this new company. And then she's like, well, why don't you, you know, launch your business? Well, I kind of run out of funding. I quit my job at Estee Lauder. I had savings. At the time, her fiance was also financially involved and in helping her out. But she eventually found out that her ex-fiance was a lying piece of shit and was cheating on her with her sister. And by the way, Stella's parents are polyamorous. I mean, there's some questions. First of all, is what she thinks is her father really her father? And was her ex-fiance kind of involved in the polyamorousness at her parents' house? Cause she grew up with strangers downstairs in their house, just coming and going part of her parents' lifestyle. That's just what it was. So the lying piece of shit ex-fiance, she bought his shares out, broke up with him, but now she's kind of worse off because she had to spend the rest of her savings on buying him out. And so now she doesn't have enough money to launch her business. Olivia and Hudson work together at this investment firm. She's like, well, at our investment firm, we do invest in small businesses and we could help you launch. And she's, she's like, okay. She gives her presentation and of course meets Hudson again face to face. And she's thinking he didn't even and call, he's thinking, I can't work with her because she tried to blow me off when I asked her for a date. I don't like her as a person right now. All of that was 
finally cleared up when Hudson initially sends her a rejection letter. Unfortunately, our company's not gonna work with you in building your business. A couple of days later, she gets an acceptance packet. She wants to know why he initially sent the rejection letter. She tries to call him at his office. He's like, I'm busy, I'm busy. He makes her wait like two days, finally gets in front of him. The whole phone number thing comes out and she finds out that he thought that she was blowing him off when he tried to call the wrong number that she had put in his phone. And he's like, now that we're gonna be working together after all, you may wanna give my secretary your real phone number. And she's like, real phone number? What are you talking about? I already gave it to you. And he's like, no, you didn't. I tried to call you for that date and it's the wrong number. And she's like, what? I was really disappointed that you didn't call. I was really looking forward to our date. And he's like, really? And then all of a sudden it's like, game on again. Stella was like, I would love to go out with you and I'm really attracted to you, but I just got burned by my piece of shit ex-fiance who cheated on me, who was also kind of my business partner. And I kind of feel like that might possibly be repeating and I don't want to soil our business relationship because of a romantic relationship. And he's like, fine, I understand where you're coming from. I will put everything on you. I'm not gonna ask you out again. You have to ask me out. And she's like, okay. And then they started working together. Her business was flourishing. Hudson used his connections to get her on a home shopping network. All of the units sold out within like an hour. Olivia set her up with a photographer to get her on the packaging or like for marketing materials. But the photographer was in LA. She thought Olivia was coming with her, but Hudson convinced Olivia for him to go with Stella. One of Stella's hobbies is reading people's old diaries. It's kind of an odd hobby, but I get it. It actually sounds like a hobby that I would have. <laughs> She buys some of them on eBay and some of them are given to her. One diary in particular, her ex-roommate Evelyn ended up giving her a diary that belonged to Hudson's ex-wife, but she didn't know it was his ex-wife. He only referred to her as Liz. Was it Liz or Lizzie? Hudson has a six-year-old daughter with his ex-wife. He is a great dad and he loves his daughter so much. He does not love his ex-wife. She's kind of a piece of shit too. So they both come from piece of shit, long-term relationships. So this LA trip, finally, all of the sexual tension blew up. Stella can't stand it anymore. And she's all like, okay, you know what? I'm asking you out. And he's like, okay, let's do this. Hudson wants to give her the best first date ever because they're like soulmates and they have this incredible connection. And so they do go to dinner, but he has all these other things planned because she's never been to LA before. They get through dinner and she's like, okay, um, that's nice. We can go sightseeing, but how about we do that tomorrow? Because um, I really want to jump your bones. Okay, um, yeah, we can do that. So when they get back to the hotel she's like how many condoms do you have and he's like uh two but i have more in my room and she's like okay you better go get those because we're gonna need all of them tonight and they did use all of the condoms okay it was just full speed ahead boyfriend girlfriend soulmate i'm in love with you just the best sex that they both have ever had everything is great her business is growing she spends more time with him and his daughter charlie well one night she made dinner with charlie at hudson's place while they were talking she found out charlie's full name lakin charlotte and she has like this light bulb in her head. She's like, oh, and that reminded her the diary that mentioned this woman, Hudson's ex wife written an entry in the diary when she had given birth to her daughter the daughter's full name lake and charlotte um she kind of freaked out i need to go home he's like uh i don't understand why and she just like um i have a headache went home dug up the diary and read through the whole diary again i think this is his ex-wife's diary everything in that diary said she had been cheating on her husband with his best friend for like a year hudson didn't know any of this they got divorced for different reasons as far as he was concerned and it all turned out to be true on top of that she's like if this is all his real ex-wife's diary i'm pretty sure that his daughter may not biologically be his daughter she's like i don't know how to break this to hudson how is he gonna believe that i have his ex-wife's diary i was given to me i didn't take it i didn't know anybody in his life besides Evelyn. The sneaky little Evelyn must have stolen it from his ex-wife. They were kind of friends at the time. A couple of weeks of silence 
and she finally broke it to Hudson. Is all of this true? He freaked out and he's like, you know what? I'm gonna be the better person. I'm not gonna talk to my ex-wife about this because point is we're already divorced. Hudson and Stella still love each other. They miss each other like crazy while they're both going through this mental life-changing experience. He does get DNA tested with his daughter and does find out that he is not biologically her dad. He confronts his best friend Jack and he was not interested in being in his daughter's life as the biological father. Hudson will eventually tell his daughter that he is not her father after all. After this experience, Stella stops reading other people's diaries, but Hudson does this less gesture where he creates his own diary that ends in him proposing, but she's only supposed to read one entry per day. But of course she can't read just one entry per day. She has to read ahead because he knew that she was gonna read ahead because they're soulmates. He ends up proposing to her sooner than he expected. It's super sweet anyway. So moral of the story, if you do get into the hobby of buying and reading other people's diaries, you might be reading someone's diary that's like a real person in your life and you might potentially be able to destroy that person's life, but they might still love you. I don't know if that's a moral. I used to keep more of a diary, but I don't sell diaries. I don't keep them lying around. I burn them, I tear them up. I shred them. I throw them away. I mean, I guess if you're dead, according to Stella, they're like a hot commodity. Like men's diaries are like prime real estate. 